Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Hermitcraft, where we have updated to Minecraft 1.19. Yeah, here I am, in the gloomy never. We want to see all of those new blocks, right? But first of all, we got to talk about this storage system that we built last episode. Many of you have shared a way for me to fix the items coming through so they don't go directly in the middle. And as you can see, it does occasionally like spit some items out to the side. But I am so excited for 1.19, we're going to be rushing out of here. So quickly, let me show you how I set this thing up. As you can see, the item filters are all together. But they started off actually being empty. As you can see, this slot here doesn't have any items in. So the trick was to just let whatever items came first fill up the hoppers one by one. And so naturally, they've sorted themselves out. And after one session, we have an absolutely insane amount of items all stored and neatly sorted. So there is more work to be done, but obviously we got to head out of here. We got 1.19 stuff to do. Oh, and I've got my hands on some fancy new tools down here. You can see them in my hotbar. I have visited the Bone Mage altar once again and have my tools enriched with the spirit of the bone. Okay, enough with the Bone Mage stuff. Yep, this is a shovel, but this over here, like this is a scythe. Look at it. It looks like a scythe, right? It's actually my hoe. And I'm hoping that today we get to put this to good use with the 1.19 stuff. Anyways, the first thing we're going to do is go on a flight across the world. Go on a flight? Is, is, is that a thing you even say? We are going on an adventure, a journey. It's, it's even snowing. And I found the world border. Oh, dang it. I'm going in the wrong direction. I have flown a long way out to find this swamp, and uh, there's a farm here, which means it's unlikely that this is new terrain. I don't think someone just built this overnight. Oh, but what's this over here? Yeah. Yeah, a few hundred blocks in this direction, the swamp kind of extends, and then becomes a mangrove swamp. So we've arrived and I've come here for one thing. However, cute throgs are definitely a plus. Hello there, my friend. <laughs> it's nice to see you in survival. Although I do the snapshot videos, 1.19 never quite feels real until you're experiencing it here on the Hermitcraft server. And look at that, another frog over there. I can see another one. So, oh, look, look, some of these fellas. Yeah, I mean, I have no plans at the moment to capture any of these and then bring them back, which is not going to be easy because you've got to transport them, right? It's not like you can pick them up and put them in a bucket. So I am here for simply one thing, one block, and that is a bush. That's all that I need. Of course, once we have one of these, we can then bone mill it and that will create the proper gule, which can then be bone milled to create the, the full sapling and then we can grow our own trees. As for the mud that grows here, well, we can make that with water bottles and dirt. And I've got a contraption that we're going to build in this episode to to make the dirt. Sorry, to, to, to make the mud. And this is the thing with exploration in this game. Because everything's farmable, you know that you're going to go and farm all these materials to build all the things that you want to. You don't have too much of a reason to stick around. I kind of wish this biome maybe had like a few rare structures or something to seek out with something unique in it. But... Otherwise, that's that's kind of it for our trip here. There I was a moment ago thinking that I was all clever, that you couldn't put frogs in a bucket, but maybe there is a way you can put them in a bucket. So tadpoles can be picked up in buckets and eventually tadpoles become frogs. So I bring some tadpoles back with me. I'm technically bringing frogs, right? Now that I've bred them, they should make their way over to the water here. Oh, that's interesting. What's this? Oh look, signs that another player has been here. Yeah, I think this might be evidence of ripping out the mud from the area. Someone's taken a lot of it. So it's like watching paint dry. I've, I've just got to wait for these to hatch and then catch them all in some buckets. Well, this is my life now. I am just standing here staring at these tadpoles. That are yet to hatch. I mean, this is this is the frog spawn. They're not tadpoles yet, X. They're not tadpoles yet. I could have a little bit of a look around, but I don't really want to turn my back on these tadpoles. They're probably going to jump onto the land and die without my attention. And they've hatched all into the water, though. There's four of them. Hey, bucket, bucket. I got it. 
So that was a little dull, but all of them have hatched now. And we got a total of 11, so I can technically bring back 11 frogs to be with me. So saying goodbye to the mangrove swamp, we head out in this direction to go underground in search of the deep dark. I was so excited that I did not properly prepare. This is my only stack of wool, and you know that wool is the secret weapon in the deep dark. But once again, we're actually just here for a single block. So as soon as we find the biome, we should be good. And this is how we're going to go adventuring today. So I've been caving, tunneling, digging, finding monster spawners along the way. In fact, I think I'm going to put this golden apple in my hot bar just in case. Because, I mean, what is that? Let's zoom in a little further. That is what we are here for, the Skulk Catalyst. And uh, as I get closer, we've got to watch out for the skulk sensors, of course. But we've got a couple of baddies to deal with on the way. Oh, that set off a sensor. Interesting. Okay, I want you to come towards me first. That sensor has been activated twice, and uh, this guy is still hanging out here. Basically, I just shouldn't eat or uh, set off any torches. That was, that was the mob. That wasn't me. So I think I'm actually probably good at the moment. Come on, guy. There we go, finally, that's it, come this way. Oh, okay, that gave me an achievement. That means that it died right next to the catalyst. This is the one and only block that I need. So if we just pop down here, I'm just gonna take this and then be out of here. Okay, that didn't even set off a sensor. There's, a, there's one of those, the shrieker right there. I needed to have broken it with silk touch and this hoe doesn't actually have silk touch. Uh-huh, I'm in range of that thing there. <sighs> Will this be enough to get that one? Remember, I can I can set this off a couple of times before the warden turns up. Oh, there's one right there as well. So silk touch is this pick. And I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna break it and take it. That sets that off. Did I just Oh no! I summoned it. It's time to leave. It is absolutely time to do the off. Um, I did not prepare for this scenario. <laughs> I am just running away and hoping that that's good enough. Also, where is the way out of here? Okay. Okay. Where did it, where did it summon? Did we cheese it? I think we cheesed the warden and got away with that. <laughs> oh my. Okay. I am a lucky, lucky boy. Yeah, actually, maybe, maybe we didn't summon it. I mean... We should see its hitbox if we did, right? Anyways, I got what I came here for, and I would like to make it out alive with this thing, because we can use it to build a farm and get all the skulk goodies that we ever want. But before we do any of that, I want to make a mud farm, get my hand on the mud blocks, as well as some mangrove wood. Why are there particle effects here? How How is that done? Okay, I really don't want to break anything, so uh, let's just investigate like this. Oh, ender chests. Just for the particle effects. That's really cool, Tango. I love that. Well, now you know how to make magical walkways, I guess. But yes, I want to get my hands on some of these new materials, including the mangrove wood, and we've got what we need, which was the proper gall. And of course, we, we had dirt and water bottles all along, so <laughs> didn't need to go on an adventure to make the mud blocks. Oh yeah, and I tried changing some things here in the tunnel and I didn't like it, and in general I, I don't like this tunnel very much. I think it'll change later in the season. Speaking of change, I also think I might move the portal from the eyes, although it's just like a really cool idea. I don't have any plans to put much in this space, and it's kind of annoying to like fly down the spine over and over again. I love the ribcage concept, but the spine is not so great, so maybe we'll put the portal down here. Well, this is convenient. Let's let's go through. Aha, because my base is so high up in the world, I can actually leave the portals we got up the top and still have this one here. Very convenient. But if we hop on through, you'll see that I got all of the new blocks from 1.19 laid out here. Okay, maybe not all of them. We don't have the skulk blocks, but I have hooked up all of these fancy new building materials. And that includes sorting out the filters in our storage system. Yes, I've got almost all of the mangrove blocks in here as well too. So here's a refresher for you. You make the packed mud block by mixing mud and wheat together. And of course, in my starter home, I have a villager in the roof, remember, farming all of the wheat. So we've got tons of that stuff. So the question is, how do I get all of this mud together? 
Well, you might happen to know it's made with dirt and water bottles. So on a live stream, I designed a contraption which I put here temporarily, and this contraption helps automate the process. So you put almost all of your dirt blocks into here, the rest go on your offhand, and then you hold down shift, right click and left click, and we are making mud, it's getting sucked up by the hopper down below. And uh, you can see it at the top of the screen, you can see the water bottles coming through, right? Anyway, I'm not going to make all of that right now. Uh, all of the blocks get collected down here. Apparently one of them didn't get converted, but you know, the rest did. So this is the very bare bones of that contraption, and it's really, really simple how it works. If I just put a block at the front here, it gets converted, then I break it, and it's ready to do that again. So when we put a block here, the redstone power goes over to the other side and it simply just does two things. It pushes this water bottle into the block, which changes it. The other thing that it does is it powers another dispenser down here that's full of glass bottles. So what that's gonna do is fill one of them up with water, but because it's full, it spits it out and then it goes up into the hopper and it's ready for the next conversion. The one that you just saw went up is the one that ended up here. And uh, this is a pretty good angle to see that in action if you look at the left side of the screen. Oh, and the hopper below doesn't take out the water bottle until it's used and turns into a glass bottle. And what I built on the server had like a dropper on the side here that'll also get powered when you do this. And then that dropper gives you some extra dirt. There's a few extra blocks to make sure that everything gets collected in the hopper below. And so with that, we got our hands on all of the mud blocks, but as for the mangrove wood, well, obviously, I had to chop down some trees. And over here, I've made an awful, very crude little farm. <laughs> Stand on there, get the proper gill, whack this thing, and it'll grow it the whole way. We need to automate this a little better, but this is how I got some proper gills to get started. So I didn't want to jump into creating like a farm or a contraption. I just wanted to go and plant down some of these trees and then chop them all down. And I actually did this underground. It seems like the mangrove tree isn't too fussy about what other blocks are nearby. And all you need is a single dirt block to put the proper gule on and then grow it. And so after planting all of those trees, I just took some time to chop everything down. And I did this manually, which reminded me that we need to learn the quirks of these new trees from the perspective of manual farming. As so often we see contraptions come around automatically harvesting everything, but they're not exactly accessible for the average player. So many players in this game have learned that with oak trees, you can grow them with a slab above in the sky, or just a regular block probably, and that will limit the size of it, which means you can grow them in rows like this, and then they become a lot easier to chop down with your axe. With spruce trees, there is this old trick. You throw the ender pearl up, then you bone mill the tree, and you land on top of it, and you can just dig your way straight down and collect all of the wood like that. And so now my question is, what do we need to learn about these mangrove trees in order to make farming them the simple way a lot more effective and easy? And my gut feeling is that this might always be a little chaotic, but if we go ahead and run this, then we get that. So what you might be able to tell is that I grew a whole bunch of propagules in a single row. So a lot of the wood is actually all in this big column going down the middle. Then we can see that the branches that come off of it are diagonal. So it's gonna be similar to chopping down the achacha trees where you go through the middle and you kinda of wanna look out for the branches that go off to the side. So what about suppressing the height of where the mangrove tree can grow? This seems to be like the cutoff point here, but these smaller trees are probably not gonna give us an effective way to chop them down. So this next idea sounded good, but then I realized that the trees are gonna grow and the roots are gonna pop off the other propagules. And also this will take a lot of time. So let's speed it up, goodness me. Ah, that was so quick. So very, very quick and all the vines are spreading. Right, and a quick test I just wanna conduct. Uh-huh. Right, so it breaks them that it doesn't pop off and create a propagule item on the ground. That explains why I can't actually see any when I look under here, but it looks like bats or something has spawned. In fact, it looks like there's empty spaces right in the middle here where the proper gules should have survived. And I think this would probably be like a nightmare to chop down manually and get all the logs, but on the inside, that's... Yeah, that would actually be a nightmare. 
So far, I'm really not gleaming like a clever way to go about this, but TNT blasts might be of use. Like, they get rid of a fair bit of the leaves. They're probably also going to destroy a fair few logs in the process too. So if you did have a big blob of trees like this, shears would be helpful. You could get leaves as well. And as you tear them out, you'll start to reveal where the logs are. You break the logs and the leaves start to decay naturally. But unlike other trees, the way in which we get the propagule with bone meal kind of means that you don't really have to concentrate on actually getting rid of everything or even collecting every single log. But something important has occurred to me. If you know exactly where the middle of the tree is, where you grew the propagule, then if you make your way down in that spot from the top, you're going to encounter the logs that go straight down and also the ones that go off to the side, which means that you can actually pick them out like this as you go down guarantee that you remove all of the logs and then all of the leaves would decay. So this realization plus another trick that I found will lead us to a useful contraption that's relatively simple to make. So let's check out what this other trick is. I'm underground now and uh, as you can see we can't grow this until there's a gap to sunlight and then it grows immediately. If we pop up here now you'll see that the tree is much smaller. We don't have all of the roots generating. You can even come back down here and just grow another one. That'll disappear in a second. Bam. But now the tree looks like this. It, it tends to start off with a small one, and as you grow more, they get bigger and bigger. So in this contraption that I've devised, you could do the same thing. You could grow the trees over and over again. It's up to you. I'm just going to do it the once. So after I place that down, I can turn around and go all the way up to the top of the tree. And the trick here is to land on top of the very center so that when we go down and break blocks, we're able to see where the logs are or any that go out to the side. And, and of course, you know, there were none that went out to the side. So let's try that again. Up to the top we go. And this time we've got a far better example. So we drop down in the middle. And as we're clearing this out, we can look to the sides and we can see where the logs are. So we can walk in, break them, pick up those items, make our way back to the middle. This has got to be like the fastest way to farm this stuff manually. Then as you'll see down the bottom here, we've got a water collection area to bring all the drops to the center. Now they're not automatically picked up, which is potentially something we could change, but the idea is that the player comes back to the middle to head down and to start on the next one. And it's not without its flaws. Quite often does it spawn like this. So when you get down to the bottom, what you need to do is replace these blocks because they're gonna have water in them you need to put another block in there to get rid of the water. It's it's kind of a pain, and I don't have a workaround for that. And you know, it's possible that we could come up with an alternate system for collecting the items or moving them with the water, and that might prevent those blocks. So yeah, maybe we can optimize this further. But for now, we've got to build it on Hermitcraft. And let me just share this little clip with you, because I was in the rib cage, and I noticed that phantoms had spawned inside of it. How bizarre is that? But anyways, here is the contraption here on Hermitcraft. I haven't actually used it yet, but I found one cool little trick. If you combine scaffolding and honey blocks like this, uh, it allows you to just sort of easily walk off the honey blocks. Otherwise, you'd fall down into that gap. So that makes getting up to the top here where we have the suppression for the mangrove tree <laughs> in place. And now we're actually ready to place a sapling, give this thing a go. I haven't put any bone meal in here. And now it's full of it and we're ready to go. Let's get our first tree. So I head up to the top and oh, it's a wimpy one. Dang it. Well, let's try again. And that is much, much better. So since I last recorded, I have taken a break, gone for a walk, and this has given my mind some time to relax and have a little bit of a eureka moment, you know? So I realized that I was trying to create a farm for propagules that would you know, give you tons and tons of them, where really all that you need is one at a time, at least in junction with this. So now when I pop down, I can get my propagule, plant it over here, and then go back up again. So all I have to do is press the button and I get exactly one every single time. And the redstone is like really compact. There's, there's not a lot going on here at all. As always though, a redstone test world is a better environment to see exactly what's going on. So when we press this button, we extend the piston for long enough to create enough pulses into the dispensers to fully grow this thing with the observer clock there. And then when it comes back, it just powers the piston at the bottom once, which pops it off. 
And so with these components put together, I think I've now got everything I need for this farming operation. Switching between the shears and the axes are a little bit lame. I could also use a hoe as well to deal with some of these blocks, but you need the axe to chop the logs. All in all though, the process is now repeatable and rather reliable. So there you go, we've built a semi-simple mangrove wood farm. So now we have the means to collect this material for some aesthetic building that I'm sure we'll be doing soon. However, I wanted to talk about why I chose this location to build the farm. You see, it's not actually close to the rib cage, which is a glorious sight to behold, but I have found trying to fly around and navigate to the particular rib cages has been quite tricky. If we use the camera for a second and just forget about flight momentum trying to get to a particular spot, it can be really difficult to approach the gaps between the ribs and then successfully maneuver into the inside. So I've been looking at all of this big open space down here and maybe thinking that we should use that as the jump off point to get to other parts of the base rather than the gaps in the ribs like that bit. And if we utilize this space well to create the paths that lead to the other parts, when you come back to this bit you have just an absolutely glorious sight as you fly up to the main storage room. Anyway, it's been super fun to get stuck in with some of the new 1.19 stuff and there's a lot more to come, but I would love your feedback on how you think the ribcage is going, so leave a comment down below. And while you're down there, be sure to leave a like because it's the end of the episode, and as always, thanks for supporting the video. I will see you soon in the next one. Bye-bye.